Oli, I've watched some of your videos and all you talk about is reading. Well, what about listening? What about speaking? Are you really saying, do you really claim, Oli, that you can become fluent in a foreign language just by reading? Well, I'm glad you asked. Welcome back to the channel, guys. My name is Oli Richards, and this channel is all about helping you learn a new language quickly through the power of story, so you can become fluent faster and live your best life. And when we're talking about story, central to the idea of stories is reading, for obvious reasons. And that's why I, on this channel, I talk about my method for learning, which is called the story learning method. It's based on stories, it's based on reading, but that often leads to the question, I think, like reading between the lines, what well, are you saying that reading is enough to become fluent in a language? And the answer to that is, I'll, I'll give you the answer right at the beginning of the video, uh, no, absolutely, categorically, no, you cannot become fluent in a language just by reading. So in that case, what on earth am I on about? Well, look, there's a couple of reasons for this. Reason number one is the basic fact that in order to speak a language fluently, you actually have to develop the physical strength in your mouth to be able to do that. And that might sound a bit weird because we talk all the time, right? But different languages have different sets of sounds. They use different parts of your mouth, of your throat. Uh, and you need to develop the stamina to do that. I always talk about an experience I had in, in Spain in the Canary Islands when I was first learning Spanish with a friend of mine and a bunch of his friends from school. We were sitting in this beautiful bar by the ocean, like a wonderful setting. Uh, we got there about 10 o'clock at night and we were just talking non-stop from 10 till about four in the morning. And by the end of it, my jaw was hurting. And I remember the ache, the real pain in my jaw from so much speaking. And that was a moment that actually taught me that actually speaking is a very physical thing. So you've got to develop the physical strength to do that. And obviously you can't do that by reading, but there's also a more kind of psychological element where you have to be able to actually compose your thoughts in the language and then translate it out of your mouth into the into sound waves and learn to do that in real time. And that's something that also takes a lot of practice. And so speaking requires you to speak a lot in order to become fluent. So why? what's all this about reading then and stories and why is this why is it relevant? Why does it matter? So I told you about the first side of speaking, which is the physiological side, but there's another side which I didn't mention, and that is that in order to speak, you need to know lots of stuff. You need to know words and a lot of them, and then you need to be able to put those words together in the right order, which means you need to know grammar. And then you also just need to get the general vibe of the language. How do you speak? How do people communicate in this language? And this crosses over into cultural aspects as well. So. To speak fluently, you've got two sides. You've got the, if you like, performative side, which is how you actually physically get the words out of your mouth. And then you've got all the stuff that you need to know in order to speak in the first place. And so when I'm talking about learning with stories, therefore learning with reading, what I'm talking about really is how do we get to the point when we know enough stuff in order to be able to start properly practicing speaking and communicating properly? Because don't forget the other side of speaking, the third side, if you like, is that you need to not only be able to say stuff, but you've also got to be able to understand what the other person is saying back to you. And these three things all have to work together in order to give you this so-called fluency. So what I thought I'd do now is contrast for you the story learning method or any input-based approach with the kind of polar opposite, which would be like a speak from day one approach. So, you know, learn a new language, start speaking as quickly as possible. Because this for me really shows where the value of reading or input is if your plan and your, if your intention is to get really good at the language. So this is a graph and at the top here, you can see my a shopping list I once wrote in permanent market, which I can't get off. So <laughs> there you go. Um, this is a graph that shows the kind of path to fluency. Across the top here, you've got how fluent you become. And across the bottom here, you've got the time that it takes you. And what you can see actually on the graph right now, this is basically what a speak from day one approach looks like, right? So you start, you learn, you, what the, the characteristic of this approach is that you can learn a bunch of words and phrases, you memorize them as quickly as possible, and then you can start speaking. And so this gives you the illusion of communication or the illusion of fluency, I guess, early on, because you, you memorize a bunch of stuff and then you can actually use it. What happens then though, is you quickly realize, hang on, this is like a drop in the ocean compared to the whole language out there, which, uh, which needs to be learned. Now, this is not to, to cast aspersions or anything on the value of this. It can be really useful to learn a bunch of stuff and to start speaking with people right away. It's just to make the point that it's just infinitesimally small compared to what everything else that remains to be learned, right? So this is what tends to happen. You, know, you learn a bunch of stuff quickly, you can communicate, and then you very quickly plateau because you just, you don't know enough words to be able to communicate. There's too much you don't understand. Uh, you may or may not be able to read depending on the language. 
And so for me, it's kind of a false economy, right? Because you learn a bunch of stuff quickly and then you, you plateau out. So what I think about when I think about a language learning method is like, okay, assuming that you want to become like genuinely fluent in a language, here is not enough. You need to get up here. This is the fluency side. So how do you do that? Well, if you learn through reading, through an input-based approach, then what tends to happen instead is you will spend a lot of time on your input like this, and then you quickly reach a critical mass of stuff, at which point it go, your fluency just goes up like that exponentially because you can now understand. You can understand the books you read. You can understand the things that you hear. Because remember, one of the core principles of, of, of the method that I teach is that you don't just read, you also listen. You get the audio and you read and listen along at the same time, which trains your listening comprehension. And so that's the basic contrast that I like to think of. Now, of course, if you take a sort of speak from day one approach, you can also then as well uh, start to start to read, start to listen, start to use a lot of input. But if you think about the fact that in order to speak fluently, you need to know so much stuff and people always underestimate how much you need to know in order to communicate freely on lots of different topics in the language. When you think about how much you need to know, you cannot get that just by speaking because people just use a tiny amount of, uh, of the stuff that they know when they speak. And also you can't be speaking most of the time. The great thing about learning by reading or through input is that you can be doing that pretty much all the time. And so that's why even if you do uh, you know, start off by learning a bunch of stuff at the beginning, sooner or later, you've got to head into spending much more time on input because otherwise you're just gonna plateau here and you'll never get beyond a basic level of fluency. And the other question that often comes up related to this is, well, what point do you start speaking? Because on the speak from day one approach, you're kind of speaking from the beginning. Um, whereas with the reading, uh, with a reading based approach, like when do you start speaking? And the truth is you can start speaking at any point. I would make the claim that if you start speaking kind of at the beginning, that like yes, you're speaking, but it's not really meaningful. You can't talk about anything, anything meaningful. You're just basically repeating phrases that you've memorized and you're trying as hard as you can to actually learn. So it's not real speaking in the sense of what, where you really want to get to in the end game of learning a language, right? Um, but of course, when you're just reading, you're, you're also not speaking. So with both of these approaches, whether you begin reading from the beginning or you start with a speak from day one approach, you've still got to sooner or later consume huge amounts of input so that you can learn the stuff that you need to learn. And then in this vision, you can start speaking whenever you want. I actually personally quite like speaking at the beginning, right? Uh, because it's just, I find that motivating, but you don't have to. And as part of the method that I teach, I actually recommend that, you know, if you have any kind of nervousness or anxiety around speaking, then just don't do it. It's perfectly fine to stick with input as long as you want. And then there'll come a threshold where you just kind of feel that all right, I know so much now that I can just start speaking and it's fun. Uh, and I actually enjoy it because I can say what I want to say and I understand people when they talk. And so from this point upwards, then you've got to obviously keep keep up with the input, but also do tons of speaking. And this is the point that I kind of described in my story at the, uh, in, the in the bar in the Canary Islands uh, earlier, where you've developed this body of knowledge in the language, and now is the time to actually go off and practice it until you are quite literally blue in the face. And that is the kind of end game point of becoming fluent in a language, but you've got to do that huge amount of grunt work first of acquiring enough language to be able to speak it in the first place. And that is why I'm such a strong proponent of reading and that's why I teach the story learning method because I believe that in the long run, this is what is gonna get you where you want to go. But look, this is just scratching the surface. So what you really need to do is watch this video because here I outlined the entire story learning method. How does it work? What do you do? What materials do you need? It's all over here. So uh, go ahead and check out that video now.